Welcome to the deep dive. Okay, today we're venturing uh, pretty far out there into the world of exoplanets, specifically one called K218b. Right. Yeah, you shared some fascinating reports, mostly looking at new observations, well, hints, really, from the James Webb Space Telescope about its atmosphere. Exactly. Hints of something, well, potentially really big. So the core question is, are these chemical signs we're seeing genuinely pointing to life? Or, and this is the crucial part, could there be non-biological ways to explain them? Especially on a world so different from Earth, we're focusing on these uh, sulfur-based molecules that have popped up. Okay, so our mission for this deep dive, figure out what the evidence actually says about life on K218b and what big questions are still out there. Precisely. Let's unpack it. All right, so K218b, it wasn't found yesterday, right? Discovered back in 2015. That's right, by NASA's Kepler mission. Kepler was incredible for showing us just how many planets are out there. This one's about, hmm, 124 light years away. Wow, so the light we see left there, like, during World War I, roughly. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. It's in the constellation Leo, orbiting a cool dwarf star. And importantly, it's in the Goldilocks zone. The habitable zone, meaning liquid water could exist. Potentially, yes. The temperature could be right for liquid water on the surface, which, as you said, is, well, pretty essential for life as we know it. And there's something else unusual about its size, isn't there? Yes, definitely. It's kind of a missing link compared to our solar system. It falls between Earth and Neptune in size a super-Earth or mini-Neptune. We don't have planets like that here. So what did scientists first think it might be like? Uh, the early theories lean towards maybe a Haitian world, Think deep global ocean covered by a thick atmosphere rich in hydrogen, very different from Earth. Okay, fascinating concept. Now fast forward to the James Webb Space Telescope, turning its powerful eye towards it. What new details has Webb added? Webb confirmed earlier findings, like the presence of methane and carbon dioxide. That was already interesting. But the real buzz started a couple of years back with hints of something else. This is the dimethyl sulfide or DMS, right? Exactly, hints of DMS. That really got people's attention. And why is DMS such a big deal? What's the significance? Well, because here on Earth, almost all DMS in the atmosphere is produced by life, specifically marine microbes like phytoplankton. It's churned out in vast quantities in our oceans. So finding it on an exoplanet, you can see why that would be exciting a potential biosignature. Precisely. It's considered one of the more compelling potential biosignatures we could look for. So yeah, the initial suggestion caused quite a stir. Okay, but science is cautious. So have we confirmed it? Is a case closed? Alien life found? Ah, uh, not so fast. While that first hint was tantalizing, um, follow-up observations and analysis by other scientists haven't solidly confirmed that initial DMS detection. It's proven tricky. So the jury's still out on whether DMS is definitely there. Right. The latest reports suggest it might be DMS or possibly a related sulfur molecule called dimethyl disulfide, or you know maybe even a combination of both. There's still ambiguity. And crucially, even if these sulfur molecules are confirmed. Exactly. Even if they're definitely present, the next massive step is proving they must come from life. Scientists have to rule out any non-biological or abiotic ways these molecules could be produced. What kind of non-biological ways are we talking about on a world like K218b? Well, you could have unusual atmospheric chemistry, perhaps driven by the hydrogen-rich atmosphere interacting with the light from that cool dwarf star. Or maybe geological processes like exotic volcanism releasing sulfur compounds. We need to explore all those possibilities. It really shows how careful you have to be. It's not just finding a molecule. It's understanding its context completely. Absolutely. The standard of proof for claiming extraterrestrial life is and should be incredibly high. So stepping back a bit for everyone listening, why does this specific planet, K218b, and these um, tentative findings really matter? I think it matters on a couple of levels. First, just the fact that planets like K218b exist in habitable zones seems increasingly common. It underscores that the raw ingredients, the planetary real estate for life, might be abundant out there. It opens up the possibility space, doesn't it? Immensely. It pushes us to think about life potentially arising in environments very, very different from Earth. And second, it's a perfect example of how new tools like the James Webb Space Telescope are pushing the absolute frontiers of what we can observe and the questions we can even ask about the universe. It's incredible technology enabling these glimpses. Okay, so wrapping this up, the potential detection of sulfur compounds like DMS on K218b is definitely exciting. A tantalizing hint? A very tantalizing hint, yes. But, and it's a big, but it's not confirmation of life. 
not yet. Much more investigation is needed both to confirm the signals themselves and to rigorously rule out any non-life explanations. Right. Caution is key. So here's something to leave our listeners thinking about. Yeah, just imagine for a moment. What would it truly mean if we did find conclusive evidence of life on a world like that? An ocean planet orbiting a dim red star, maybe totally unlike anything we know. How would that single discovery just completely reshape our understanding of biology, our place in the cosmos, everything? A profound thought to ponder. It really changes the perspective.